For this exercise, we want to discuss how much radiation is attenuated and exits the body. Now, when we want to figure out an entrance dose, all we have to do is take our phantom, put the ion chamber on the front, make an exposure, and it gives us a readout, and that's our you know, entrance dose. When we want to know an exit dose, it's sort of the opposite. You just put it on the back side, make the exposure, and there's your exit dose. But when we want to know any kind of a dose inside the body, that's a different story. What we would love to have is one of those phantoms where it actually has compartments that the ion chamber would fit into and you can slide it in, but we don't have one of those phantoms. So we made one of our own up. And what we ended up using was those blocks of polyethylene that we have and then just a bunch of bags of saline water. So they were 500 cc saline bags just taped together as tight as possible and, uh, and every one was the same. So we made four of them and then we just put the ion chamber on top. There's also the KVP meters up there, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the dose here. So the technique we started with and that we just used was 85 at 14 mass. It was at 45 inches, it was collimated to 14 by 17, and the entrance dose was 2.13 R. So you can see that you know, over 2 R was the entrance dose. When we went a quarter of the way in, it dropped down to almost exactly half. So that's basically half the dose did not make it a quarter of the way into the patient. When we got to the midline, which is also called a midline dose, that was now 22% of the original, you know, original dose got to the middle of that patient. When we're down at three quarters, we're now down to 9.2% made it three quarters of the way into the patient. And when we get to our exit dose, we're at 2.4%. So only 2.4% of the original radiated dose got to the backside and made it out of the patient. So here now, we're inside of the Bucky. Now we couldn't turn the you know, Bucky on, you can't have a reciprocating grid going when you got an ion chamber sitting in there. So, but this would just be like any time you're just using a stationary grid. And now you can see that how much got through that grid? 0.4%. 0.4. That's less than half of 1%. So that means that 99.6% of the original you know, x-ray going into that person's body did not make it all the way through them and through that grid and back to your IR to create your image. So you can see that it's not a very efficient system because you know, 99.6% didn't make it to your IR to create your image. So we're only using 0.4% to create an image. But what an unbelievable image we're creating, right? It's all, it's what we do. So, you know, we're not using very much x-ray to actually create our, our beautiful, wonderful images. And most of it is either being absorbed or scattered out or doing something, but it's not back there actually making your image. So this should be the proof of why you always want to use the highest KV you can and the lowest mass that you can because most of it is not really there to create the image after all.